evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome once again to the Hill Hernando Baptist Church virtual midweek worship. We thank and praise God again for another beautiful day. We pray that you've had a blessed day and pray that God has really shown himself mighty in your life today. We want to give honor to our pastor, Dr. Michael O'Miner, our first lady, Sister Lottie Miner, Evangelist Robinson and Minister Beattie, and to all the Hill Church family, and to all who's watching tonight, we just thank God once again for you joining us here tonight on Zoom, on Facebook, on YouTube. We just thank God for you being a part of our service. Tonight, our call to worship will come from Psalm 98, verse 1, 2, and 3. I'll give you just a minute to find it and we're going to read it together and then we're going to do a short congregational song together and we can all just sing where we are we just thank god again once again for blessing us and bringing us through this day one more opportunity to tell him thank you one more opportunity to shout hallelujah to his name psalm 98 verse 1 2 and 3. i'll sing to the lord a new song for he has done marvelous things his right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. His righteousness he has revealed in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the end of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. God's word for God's people. Help me, if you will, sing this little congregational song. Glory, glory, hallelujah, sister, lay my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, sister, lay my burdens down. I feel better, so much better, since I laid my burdens down. I feel better, so much better, since I laid my burdens down. I'm going home to live with Jesus since I laid my burdens down. I'm going home to live with Jesus since I laid my burdens down. Now every round goes higher and higher since I laid my burdens down. Every round goes higher and higher since I laid my burden down glory glory hallelujah since i laid my burdens down glory glory hallelujah since i laid my burden down Amen. Amen. May we bow our head. Most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this evening just to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we just want to thank you for watching over us all day long, Father. Lord, we just want to take thank you for taking care of us, Father. Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, because you've been so good to us, Father. Lord, there will be a whole way of touch right now, Lord. We need you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything, Father. Search the sick and afflicted all over the land and the country, Father. Search the one that got the virus right now. Ease that pain, Father. It will be your holy will, Father. Search the one that's on the front line, Father. Search the heroes, Lord, that's taking care of the sick, Father. Lord, we just thank you for everything, Father. Lord, we know troubles don't last always, Father. We're kind of leaning and depending on you, Father. We're trusting in you right now, Lord. 
because you say you'll never leave us not forsake us, Father. And we're just thanking you right now. Lord, if we are holy, we'll come into our worship right now, Father. We need you, Lord, and we just can't get along with that, the Father. Lord, we just thank you. We give you the glory and all the praise, the Father, because you were to be praised, Father. Lord, just touch every church that represents you right now, Father. Lord, just give them more strength to carry on in your holy word, Father. But we know after a while, everything's going to be all right, Father. We just thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor, Father. We give you hallelujah right now, Lord, because you were to be praised, Father. We just thank you for keeping us today, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Father. Lord, if it had not been for you on our side, Lord, what would we be, Father? We just thank you, Lord. We just thank you for supplying our needs, Father. We just thank you, Lord. These bless us, bless we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. All right. Good evening, everyone. We're glad that you join us for our midweek Bible study, our midweek worship. Uh, for those of you all that are on YouTube, we thank you for joining us. Many of you all join us each week. Uh, God bless you. For those on Facebook, uh, thank you for uh, being a part of our uh, ex worship experience on this evening. Look, uh, tag somebody, uh, share it. Uh, we're still going to, uh, in this Psalm 23, uh, God uh, provides. Uh, Psalm 23, God uh, provides. A amen, amen, amen. We certainly hope that you have been blessed. Can I just say that for everybody? I certainly hope that you have been blessed by this uh, Bible study. I have been blessed, uh, amen, in just going through this very familiar song, amen, and just uh, allowing an opportunity for God to talk to us through the scripture that we kind of run through, uh, amen. And look, I know that many of us I'm uh, so glad to see the wonderful weather. I just walked outside uh, a little while ago, and it's just amazing. You know, the first part of last week, we had on corduroy pants and thermal underwear and scarves, and it was just freezing. And today, uh, out, I didn't have to put a hat on uh, and everything. It's just wonderful. It's just a reminder, after every winter, there is a spring and then a summer. Amen. Amen. Uh, certainly, we in our, our Hill Hernando Church family, we're, we're thankful for those. Uh, we're hearing those who are coming and are getting their vaccine, uh, vaccinations. Uh, amen. Uh, Sister Maya and I, the Lord said the same. We'll get ours on tomorrow, our first shot. So we're still encouraging everyone, amen, to get the vaccination uh, so that we can get back uh, to our new normal. All right. All right. Look, uh, we know we're in Psalm 23, but as we said before, we just want to read it together. Amen. We know we memorize it, but read together. Um, and I want to just read from the King James Version uh, on tonight, uh, verses one and two. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leaveth me beside the still waters. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. David, a psalm of David, the shepherd boy who became king. Amen. Last week, we, we focused on those green pastures, and tonight we want to focus on the still waters. Uh, notice that the uh, second part of verse 2 uh, says, uh, uh, he leadeth me beside the still water. We know the he is referring to the shepherd, and the shepherd is God. Remember, we've already discussed how in the Old Testament days that the shepherd wasn't uh, a man behind the flock. The shepherd was in front of the flock. So God is out front leading us, amen, beside the still waters. You know, it could have just said, he leads me to the water. But uh, if you do research on sheep, you will discover sheep will not uh, drink from troubled water. It has to be calm water. Uh, it's, it's probably because sheep are, are unrecognized or afraid because of their heavy coats. Uh, amen. The wool uh, they have on their bodies, if it gets wet, they will sink like a rock. So naturally, if they go up against that water that's 
that's moving rapidly or is in stormy uh, seas per se, uh, they have a natural instinct to go the other direction. Uh, amen. Because they know if they get caught up in these troubled waters, they will drown. They will die. Can I put a pin there? You know, it's amazing that the sheep got enough sense that when they get up to trouble waters, they go the other direction. It, it never ceases to amaze me how too many believers get up towards trouble. Instead of turning around from the trouble or going to God in their trouble, they just jump over in the trouble and figure they're going to make it out. Not recognizing that Satan has set a trap of some trouble, some troubled waters in their lives. And and when that happens, amen, they do it in a way away from the shepherd. And sometimes it's God's will uh, that they will die. Sometimes it's God's will that they will have to go through hardship. And sometimes it's God's will that he will rescue them out. But I would just say to you early on, and I studied tonight, that we got to allow the Lord to lead us beside the still waters. But when we do get in that situation in our lives where there is a storm, just like the shepherd in the Old Testament time led the sheep to a place of safety, God is able to do it. Can I, can I remind us on last week that many of us, amen, it was cold. Some people ran out of gas. They had electricity, but the house, amen, was running on the heat on gas, had no gas, and they spent days, amen, in the cold. But thank God for heavy coats and electricity, and they made it through because there were some people who didn't have water, didn't have electricity. Uh, it, 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 was, it was sad to hear about the folks who froze to death. In America, the United States of America, people freezing in their home, home, freezing to death. My God Almighty, it's just a reminder that we can't just keep on going along to get along. We can't keep on raising the fuss and all this stuff, but we really have to address some real infrastructure issues. We have to address more love in our communities and God will definitely bring us through. But let me go back here and go on beside the still water. So now we can imagine y'all, these still waters, we can imagine a, a serene, uh, calm stream of water flowing peacefully down a rocky pebble stretch. It reminds me that I went when I went to speak in uh, Denver, Colorado, and uh, I was able to walk along the stretch uh, of the of a river. I can't remember which river I was on now, but I was in it. And and it, what was amazing to me, I'm walking in the middle of a river, but the river was just like a stream, and it was going right across the the rocks, and I was in the middle of it. And and what got me was that this is a river. Even though it was a small stream of water, it was flowing. Gently, but it was flowing. Gently enough so that I could walk right down the middle of it. It wasn't very deep. Uh, amen. So uh, just the, 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 the bottom portion of my shoes got wet. My, my socks didn't even get wet. And it was reminding me of, I thought about this Psalm 23, about the still waters, that if I were a sheep and I and I came up to the edge there, I'd be able to lean over and drink uh, from the peaceful waters. Uh, amen? Amen. And, and if we allow God to do this, he will allow us, amen, to get this uh, opportunity to be beside the still waters, okay? God wants us to live lives beside the still waters. Amen. The calming influence of his Holy Spirit. Amen. So we know from reading from what we've read so far that not only does he want us to feed us in green pastures, but he leads us beside still waters. Uh, the Hebrew uh, word for the phrase still waters means restful waters or refreshments. Amen. Restful waters or refreshments. Amen. Sometimes we don't come, uh, amen, for a full meal. We just need some type of refreshment, something to tide us over to the main meal. 
Uh, amen. So going beside the still waters, a time of refreshment. Uh, amen. Uh, a time to just be a pause. Amen. The, the sheep would take a quick drink. Amen. Before they went on uh, grazing. Uh, a quick pit stop. Uh, amen. And so sometimes on life's journey, we need a moment beside the still waters. We need a refreshment period. We need an opportunity to stop. Amen. So God can allow us to have that place of rest. And not only is the place of rest, but God can have us a place of trust. And not only is a place of rest and a place of trust, but a place of confidence. Uh, amen. A place of rest, a place of trust, a place of confidence, a place where we can rely on the Lord, be focused on him without anything distracting us. Uh, amen. We're going to find in a few minutes why we won't have those distractions. Uh, and it goes back to what we talked about last week. And we're able to be, uh, to go beside those still waters and feel this calmness because he takes away the heavy load. He takes away the heavy load from our lives, lives and he replaces it with his peace and, and his rest. God can do it. He can do an exchange. He'll do an exchange if we only let him. A amen. All right. But we need water. We need water. You know, it's amazing that the body can live longer without food than it can live without water. I, I just thought that was crazy when I, when, I, when I heard that in biology class. But my instructor rem, uh, told us that literally the body can feed upon itself the stored up fat and, and the muscles. They will, that's why you see people that have been uh, out and stranded, didn't have much but water, that they're all emaciated in skin and bones. But, but the body needs water to break down the fat and the muscles to create the energy that the body needs to survive. We can make it without food, but we can't make it without water. And in our relationship with the Lord, we have the living water. And amen. The living water that Jesus uh, uh, talked about, the woman at the well, the living water, amen, the living water. We can think about it on this side of the Holy Spirit that gives us the living water on the inside that allows us the power to strengthen us and to help us grow in our walk with the Lord. And on the other side in glory, we will drink from that fountain, we'll drink one time and we'll never have to drink again from that living water. Amen. Amen. So we got to have water to survive. Amen. And if we allow the Lord to work in our lives, he will uh, get us to that point where we are beside the still waters. We can have that, that peaceful, a amen, uh, uh, opportunity to uh, just relax and have the water there to help us process the things of life everything will be all good in the Lord. Not worry about looking over our shoulder, about somebody going to jump us, not having nerves and worry because we are trusting in the Lord. He leads me beside the still waters. All right. As I was looking at this, I, I thought about three um, highlights, uh, three lessons that we can glean, that we can pull up from this part of Psalm 23, verse 2, the second part, okay? All right? The, the first thing that, as believers, that as Christians, is we have to know that God guides us through his Holy Spirit. God guides us through his Holy Spirit. Amen. He leads me. Amen. So, so now, uh, God created the world, the heavens, the earth, everything, and and God acted uh, throughout the Old Testament. And then in the beginning of the New Testament, he brings his son, Jesus, God the Son, who came uh, in flesh on the earth and, and died as the perfect sacrifice for our sins and got up on the third day morning as victorious over death. Uh, amen. And then... Uh, uh, later, after he 
uh, had ascended to heaven, then the Holy Spirit came down first to the Jews. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. And then the Holy Spirit fell upon, uh, amen, uh, the black people, when the uh, black folks, when the Ethiopian eunuch, and then the Holy Spirit uh, fell down on the Samaritans, and the Holy Spirit fell down on the Gentile when it went to Cornelius' house. All those things were saying that God's presence, God the Holy Spirit, is within every believer. As soon as we accept Jesus, our personal Savior, we get the gift of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to tear it forward. We don't have to be, uh, let's not lay hands on us. We receive instantaneously upon our acceptance of Jesus, the Holy Spirit within us. And the Holy Spirit is our paraclete in the Greek or the person that walks beside us. Amen. He is our companion. He is our guide. He guides us. God guides us. Amen. Beside the still while he leads us to the still waters through his Holy Spirit. Now, the issue is this. And can I raise both my hands? Even before GPS came out, uh, we'd be going somewhere and we have a map and so do some things, and sometimes the map may be a little bit dated or whatnot, and, and Sister Mine will be on me, tell me, look like we're going the wrong way. I said, no, we're going the right way. We're going the right way. You know what ends up happening. Amen. We end up way away from where we're supposed to be. My God Almighty. Uh, uh, because I'm leaning on my understanding. I have it set in my mind that I'm on the right road. I'm going in the right direction. I'm doing the right thing. No matter, about, no matter what you tell me, I, I, I know I'm right. And all the while, I'm wrong. And, and that's how it is too often in, on our Christian journey. We are steadily thinking we're right, we got it, we're doing this thing, and we're definitely wrong. We need to take time out and allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. Amen. He only wants to guide us in the right way and put us on the right road. The Holy Spirit always gives us the right direction. It, you know, if we would listen to the Holy Spirit 100% of the time, we would be right 100% of the time. So you're saying to me, Pastor Matter, if the Holy Spirit, if he's right 100% of the time, why don't we always listen to him? It's because of our sin nature. Amen. It's kind of like some of these horror movies we see. You know, we look at the movie and we say, if we were in the movie, It'd be over in, in a minute because we see something scary, we're going to go the other direction. But in the movies, they see something scary and it's, a, it's attractive to them and they go in and you know what happens. They get killed, they get beat up or somebody get captured or whatever the case may be. And Satan makes it look so good that other role that instead of us going on that right road, we, we look at the road that Satan laid out and we end up messed up. Amen. But the first thing that we learned, that the lesson that we learned from looking at this Psalm 23, verse 2, part B, amen, is that God's Holy Spirit guides us. God's Holy Spirit guides us. All right? And the second lesson we learned is that the waters don't cause us fear. We're not afraid of the water. We're not afraid of the water. We're not afraid of the water. And I thought about that, that water, that water, that water for the sheep, it represented this refreshment, what they needed uh, to be able uh, to uh, uh, break down the food that they had so they can survive. Uh, amen. And in our uh, spiritual walk, and this water is symbolic of the living water of Jesus, the Holy Spirit running within us and within our spiritual veins. Uh, amen. Uh, and so we're not afraid of it. We're not afraid to allow God to work within us. We said, well, that sounds kind of counterintuitive. That sounds like opposite. Why would be we would be afraid? Well, you know, the truth of the matter is, uh, and it's even more so for black men than any other uh, folks, is that the idea that somebody, quote unquote, is telling us what to do. Amen. And all of us, it's human nature that we want 
to have our own way and do our own thing. And we have some fearful or, or, or some reservations about somebody telling us what to do. Uh, amen. Uh, and, it, and it's most of the thing for, for black men, going back to slavery when the, the, the master would just, or the overseer just had a real hard uh, on it. And, and even to, up until today, uh, it is difficult in some ways that the spirit is, is telling us and leading us and we are afraid to do what God wants us to do. Amen. God wants us not to go and knock that person side the head. Uh, amen. And we're afraid not to do it because we're showing a sign of weakness. Amen. The Holy Spirit is telling us that we don't need to go over to that place. Amen. It looks good, but it's trouble over there. Uh, but your humanistic side is afraid not to go because we're going to miss out on something. Look what it's saying now. Uh, I'm not afraid of this, this living water, this spiritual water that's flowing through my veins. A amen. You look over there and there's this person that you feel like that it's going to be a Mr. Right or a Miss Right. Uh, amen. And, and this is the person for you and whatnot. We know, we realize that, that everything that, that look good on the outside ain't good on the inside. And, and we're afraid not to go because we are concerned that we're going to miss out on something. That's what Satan says. Amen. Like the cartoon with the two little uh, 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 nymphs on either side. One is representing Satan. One is representing the Lord. And one representing Satan say, oh, you need to go. You need to go over there. You're going to miss out on something. You're going to hate yourself for not going. And the angel said, no, no, you're not missing anything. There's nothing but trouble over there. You know everything is fine here. Why you want to go over there and get yourself all messed up? And then keep going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And amen. In the cartoon, you know what happens? The cartoon characters go there where the, the, the little evil character says and get all messed up. And we've all been down that road, amen. But we can't, we have to get to the point where we're not afraid of God's guidance. We're not afraid of where God leads us. We're not afraid uh, of because we are losing so-called friends, but we're getting closer to the Lord. See, sometimes you can measure how strong your walk with the Lord is by the number of friends you lose. Because if you're losing those friends, they really weren't your friend at all. Amen. Let me move on because I can just talk about that part all night long. So he guides us through his Holy Spirit. And, and we're not afraid of the, the spiritual waters running through our vein. But then the final thing is that they run deep. The spiritual waters run deep. Amen. The stream, the waters, they run deep. Amen. Many times the shepherd has to be concerned because if the edge, amen, is fine, the sheep can you know, and get the water. But if it goes a little bit farther, it's deep, and the sheep can drown. The depth of God's spiritual waters, they are very deep, but it does not cause us to drown and die, but it causes us to be, quote, unquote, drowned, immersed in his Holy Spirit. And in this immersion, amen, is not a negative thing, but it's, it's, it's akin to our baptism, that when we immerse that go down in the water, we come up, amen, a, a new creature. And what we're saying here is that the, the depth of God's love, the depth of the spirit of working within us is deep beyond our comprehension. God is ready, willing, and able to be with us and guiding us. No matter how much trouble we get into, it's not too much for him because God, the depth of these spiritual waters of, of God's spirit is so deep, is deeper than any trouble, is deeper than any hurt, it is deeper than any emptiness, it is deeper than any of our fears, it's deeper of anything that we can experience in our lives. We can put it there and God's love, his spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is deeper and can was able to bring us through whatever it is. Somebody ought to be just shouting right there, knowing that no matter how bad it is, hard it gets, the trouble we're in, amen, that there's immeasurable how deep God can go down and bring us back up. Oh, hallelujah. I'm just, just thankful to God tonight. For how he's done it in my own life that 
when I was in my deepest depth of trouble, a deepest depth of sickness and whatever it has been, I just was amazed at how God reached down and, and pulled me up and, and brought me out. And I looked around and I just had to give him thanks for what he done. I, I know I'm a minister. I know I'm a pastor. I know I'm saved and sanctified and blood washed. But I'm just here to tell you there have been some times that I wondered. But I want you to know God was gave me a reminder that every now and then I got to test your faith because you can't have a testimony till you had the test. And I want you to know that whatever it is, God is able to bring you through. Some of y'all last week were concerned because, uh, amen, you didn't have what you wanted to eat, but you had plenty of heat and plenty of water, amen, and folks in Texas didn't have either one of them. God was reminding us that we got to be thankful in every situation, and he gives us a reminder of back when in our lives, 1994, when the ice storm came, and we were a week without power and everything as a reminder that God bought it again this time, but this time he blessed us. Amen. And even though some folks got to boil water, at least you got water to boil, you got power to boil it with. We got to be thankful for the little things that God has done, the little things that God has blessed us with. We go around talking about what we don't have, but we don't go to the Lord and thank him for what we do have. Because when you woke up this morning, you, you had eyes to see and ears to hear. When you woke up this morning, you didn't have to worry about a, a, a roof over your head. When you woke up this morning, you didn't have to worry about clothes you're going to put on. And, and even though you might not have been hungry, in the refrigerator there was food to eat and, and all these things that God has done for you. And there you go complaining about what God had done for you. But remember, he leads us beside the still water. He wants us to drink from that living water. And God will. Oh, let me quit there. Let me quit. I'm, I done got happy, y'all. Amen. Amen. We've been running on our time. So, amen. But we thank you. We just thank him. And hopefully you've been blessed tonight. I have. Remember, the Holy Spirit wants to guide us. Amen. And with the spirit of water, we're not afraid. And it's so deep. It's beyond any of our trouble that we can have. Look, we want to extend an invitation to you tonight. Amen. If you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, you can do so. Right where you are. All you got to do is pray a simple prayer. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I accept Jesus as my personal Savior. Lord, I'm a sinner. I accept Jesus as my personal Savior. And just like that, you're saved. But look, we want to connect with you. Inboxes. Call us at 662-298-3584 or email us at info at thehillhernando.com. Or maybe you kind of backslidden, amen, on your journey. And in this pandemic, this last week, the ice storm reminded you that. Well, just pray a simple prayer. Lord, I want to be restored. Lord, I want to be restored. And just like that, he'll restore you. Maybe tonight you need special prayer. Uh, all right, you can just put it in our chat. Um, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on Facebook, uh, uh, amen, uh, you can uh, call us. We've been praying all week. We have some special prayer requests this week, amen. Uh, for, we have some special prayers that we have, so we're going to be ending our prayer tonight. We believe in the power of prayer. Look behind me here. It says, God provides, y'all. God provides. Look at his hand, his outstretched hand. Lord, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou would draw thyself to me, oh, weather, shall I go. Amen. All right. Look, uh, we're getting ready for our closing prayer. Thank our uh, ministerial team for opening us up on tonight. I uh, hope that you'll join us on uh, Sunday at uh, 945 for our virtual Sunday school, uh, followed by our morning worship. We we'll close out our, our session, our sermon series on the Negro spiritual songs of deliverance. And we're going to look at Daniel. Didn't the Lord deliver Daniel? Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you for this early rising. We thank you for allowing us to be together in this midweek worship, amen, and Bible study. We thank you, Lord, for this series uh, on Psalm 23. We know that you are a provider, and we thank you for it. We thank you, Lord, for all the wonderful things that you're doing in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that 
you have been made a way for us and bought us from last week and all the ice and snow and, and cold. And we're here this week and see all the bright sunshine. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Recognize that our presence here today is just a gift of your love. Lord, now that we thank you, we have some prayer requests. We ask you, Lord, to for a blessing. Amen. Minister Salisbury, uh, brother, who's having surgery on this week, blessed right now. Uh, we ask that uh, Minister Bloodsoe, her, her daughter's father-in-law, uh, we ask a special blessing on him as only you can. We ask a special blessing on Sister Randy Phillips' family. We know that she is gone from this, from this earth and is a missing a link in their family. We ask you just to touch them right now. And Lord, as our president, uh, President Biden last night uh, shared and asked us to, to remember the 500,000 plus people who died since last year. Uh, Lord, even though there's so many and we don't want to, and we feel like they're just beyond our comprehension, but there was somebody's mama and daddy and grandmother, granddaddy, or husband or wife. We're just praying for healing for the families and healing for our nation, even right now. And Lord, bless all those others that are poor, sick, and afflicted, bereaved families everywhere. Lord, we can bless all of our leaders, not only our president and our vice president, but bless our governors and our mayors and all those the local levels, Lord. All the pastors and teachers, preachers of your word, all the church doors open your name, bless right now. Our young people, bless them, Lord, as they go forth. Uh, in this virtual school and some that are in school and are trying to deal with the situation that they're in. Touch right now, even the teachers and the administrators. Lord, I continue to bless us as we, we take the vaccine and things are starting to point to the direction of getting back to normal. But Lord, give us sense enough uh, to keep wearing our mask and keep doing social distancing. We don't want to get almost to the end of the journey and then fall short. Lord, then bless us on the hill. Keep us, Lord, in the love that you bless us with. We thank you, Lord, for strengthening us and helping us to grow even stronger in the pandemic. Uh, Lord, we just thank you right now for how you're blessing us on the hill. And then, Lord, if it be your will, allow us to assemble together virtually on Sunday for Bible, for Sunday school and morning worship. But, Lord, if we don't assemble on this side, we'll see you over in glory. And, Lord, we ask you right now and call it done. Oh, it's in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, and the mighty love of Christ rest through and bow with us henceforth, now, and forevermore. Let us all say together, amen. Amen. God bless you. We thank you so much for joining us on this week. Be blessed.